morning, and welcome to Hopewell Reformed Church. If you're visiting with us, we ask you to fill out the Get Connected card, and if you have any prayer requests this morning, please fill out the prayer request card and put that in the offering plate. And welcome to all of you that are zooming in at this time, too. Please join me in the call to worship, which is on the screen. We come this day to worship. We come in celebration of God's Spirit, who shares our worship. We come reclaiming the Spirit. We come in the renewing power of the Spirit. We come to be refreshed by the Spirit. We come to be filled with the Spirit, filled with love, joy, and peace. We come in the name of the Spirit, Christ's gospel, to proclaim. We come this day to worship. Amen.
the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are ships without wind, or chariots without steeds. Like branches without sap, we are withered. Like coals without fire, we are useless. So come, Holy Spirit, please come. Take away the darkness from our minds. Open our eyes. Revive our faith. Remove our doubts and our fears. Kindle in us the flame of everlasting love. Amen. <laughs> So if all the children want to come down and sit here, we will begin the children's message. Hi there. So we're going to do a little bit of a language lesson today. 
But it's going to be really simple, I promise. Do you, are you, have you started, have you learned any other language besides English? Uh, no. no? Awesome. So you're going to learn how to say your name in other languages today. So this is English, right? So we always ask this question, right? What is your name? Mateo. Awesome. Mateo, very nice to meet you. I'm Tim. So there's two other languages we're going to look at. And this one, which for everyone here, if you want to help me with some German, uh, I am... I'm not versed in German, but I do know the W is a V, so it sounds like a V. So we say, Vi Heisen Sai. Want to say it with me? Vi Heisen Sai. Okay. And then this one I think a few of us know um, who are Spanish speakers. So this is also the same question, but it's Como te llamas? Let's try to say that. Como te llamas? Now for actual native Spanish. Did I say that correctly? Awesome. Great. Because uh, everyone at youth group likes to make fun of me for how I say my Spanish. But, so the reason why we did that is because we're going to be talking about Pentecost today. And Pentecost is this moment um, that we read in Acts where the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. And so there's about 120 in the crowd. And they all started speaking in different languages of the people that were there visiting Jerusalem. So like, but natively, as if they had known it since, when, like, since they were born. And so it's an amazing miracle uh, that these guys, uh, and these men and women, who all grew, like, grew up in Galilee, were speaking perfect different languages. Uh, and they were talking about Jesus and proclaiming the gospel. And so it's amazing that this is what the Spirit does to us. We all have the Spirit individually inside of us, and so it unites us. Even if we do speak different languages, we can all still talk about uh, the gospel to each other. So that is the lesson today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us your spirit, that it unifies us no matter what language we speak, no matter what our backgrounds are or anything like that, that you are the, you're the God that unifies us and uh, you connect us to your son in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. So I think we don't, right, we're just, there's no Sunday school, so you can just go sit back with it. Come on. All right. I have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, we are redoing the Faith Night at the Renegades. I hear there was a rain out. So the new Faith Night will be June 3rd, correct, Doug? June 3rd? So please, if you have a ticket, I'm understanding that they're uh, honoring those tickets. And if you didn't have a ticket because you were busy that night, hopefully you can come this time. So please. Uh, Great. So did you all hear that? Make sure you sign up on the website so that we get a uh, kickback on that ticket. On June 11th, there'll be another family hike, this time to Madame Brett's, and you can talk to Diane or Ron Tompkins. Um, all these announcements are in the bulletin. There are also a lot of them on the website, so please check that and um, make sure that you see all the things that are going on at the church. Also, June 11th, a very busy day, we're going to have music to celebrate spring, and the Howland Chamber Music Circle is going to present a concert here at HRC on that Sunday at 4, featuring, a, uh, featuring the Clara Quartet. So it's free for you to come. Excellent music. We know the music here at HRC is wonderful. And anytime we have guest musicians in, it's fantastic. June 12th will be Odyssey's Fun Night. So you can go to the ARC in Poughkeepsie and play games with our Odyssey friends. Great time of fun and fellowship and a, a way to reach out to that community. We'll now go to our time of prayer, and I have several prayer requests, so what I'm going to do is just start us in prayer with that, and then I will have a time of um, where you can lift up names of people that you have. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, first of all, we come here to thank you, to praise you, and to honor you for all that you do in our lives. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we lift up all those who have given their life in the service of our country. And we ask that you would be with their families and comfort them. 
as they remember. We pray for the family and friends of Barbara Argyle who passed away unexpectedly. Please be with them and hold them dear. Be with the search committee that is looking for a position of coordinator and care and counseling for our church. We ask that you would lift up any potential candidates and the members who are serving on that committee. May your hand guide us to the correct person to fill this need. Be with Carol and Dave O'Malley's grandson, Dylan, as he's in Uganda. Please keep him safe. May he have a great time seeing that country. We pray for the family of Tim Keller and grieving his death, and we thank you for his service here on earth as your voice. We pray for Cindy Gerber's mom who has COVID, and then we also lift up her dad who has uh, immune problems, and we just ask that you would protect him and that you would help Vivian Young to recover totally. We lift up Tracy Wolf, who had a stroke on Monday. Her mom, Judy, who's dealing with esophageal cancer. And Jan Bush's friend, Jerry Williams, who has also been diagnosed with cancer, Lord. There are so many illnesses and so many things that we ask your hand to be on. We ask that you would break the chains that are dividing our denominations and bring all the youth of your church, not just this church, but of all churches together, Lord. We need a revival in that youth group. They are the next generation, and we here at HRC are planting the seeds for the next generation, and we ask that that goes on in all churches around the world. We pray for Louise Murray, who has advanced cancer. And we just ask for healing and comfort for her. We pray for Priscilla Conrad's daughter, Samantha, for her safety, and that she would be open to learning and uh, on her new job and in her new home. We pray for Ryan Serrano for surgery after a motorcycle accident, Lord. Help him and keep him safe. We pray for Carol Hand's cousin Morgan, who's in Guam, and the typhoon that was supposed to hit there on Wednesday, Lord. I don't know what the status is, but I just ask that her safety is in your hands and that you would be with that whole nation as they deal with the aftermath. We pray for the restoration of a driver's license for Deb F., and for full-time employment for Crystal Vines. And we continue to lift up those we love in this church. There are so many. Jenny Young, Teresa Gerlach, Kelly Rogers, Judy Phillips, Baby Liam, Jeff Miller, Laura Rose, Andy Bell. There's more and more, Lord. We just ask that you would be with all of our friends and our families. Keep them safe. We pray for health, Lord, and that's such an important thing for us, but we also pray for spiritual awakening, revival, encouragement, because that's even more important than the health. And now, Lord, we lift up the names of those that we love. pray for all of these folks. We pray for those who are traveling on this Memorial Day weekend. We lift up Doug and Sarah and their family as they are away. And we also lift up Tim this morning as he shares his message with us. 
Father God, may your hand be over this entire church. In Jesus' name. says, be sure you get what's coming to you. But God's word says, God has been gracious in meeting your needs, from Luke 12, 32. The world says, personal wealth is your security. God's word says, refuge in God is your security. Isaiah 57, 20. The world says, give. So you obtain favor. And God's word says, give, because you have obtained favor from God. Luke 12, 48. Our morning offering will now be received.
Father, in gratitude, we return to you this portion of your blessings to us. Please use these offerings in the furtherance of your kingdom here in our community and wherever your name is proclaimed. And we lift up the prayer that you taught us over these blessings. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Good morning, everyone. This week's passage comes from Acts 2, and it's verses 1 through 8, and then 13 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and that they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Heavenly Father, open up our hearts and our minds to what you want us to hear today, and just let the words that I say be the words um, that are coming from you, in Christ's name. So first I want to draw us back to an Old Testament story uh, of the Tower of Babel, and that story is, as we know, full of confusion and chaos and division, where humans all spoke one single language together, and because of their great communication and their accomplishments through that, they wanted to challenge the greatness of the Lord by erecting a tower to the heavens. Now, the thing is that their hearts, the condition of their hearts, were in rebellion to God and just full of arrogance. And it's ironic that uh, in Genesis, it actually says that God came down to see what was happening. So I guess they weren't quite all the way to the heavens as they had thought in building this. But like I said, due to the condition of their heart, God makes them all speak different languages. And from that, there's chaos and infighting, and they end up uh, abandoning the project, and they scatter across the land. Now, there is a contrast when we're going to be looking at this passage, and this passage here is the story of Pentecost, which is 50 days after the Passover and the resurrection of Jesus, and it is speculated that it wasn't just the 72 or even just the 12 that were there that had this experience, but it was about 120 from what we know from Acts 1, where they're all living together, and they are still a little afraid of what has happened after uh, Jesus has, has left. But this isn't a small group that this happens to. 
And it even says in verse 2 that the, that the Spirit came like a violent wind that filled the house and, the, and tongues of fire rested on their heads. And so for all of these Jews that are here, they're going to recognize this for two things. First of all, in the Old Testament, we know that the pillar of fire represented in the, in the desert when they were leaving Egypt and going to the land of Canaan, that it represented God's presence and it also guided them at night. But it was the physical manifestation of God's power and presence in front of them. And now that physical manifestation showing up as small tongues of fire by their heads has not just gone from the greater group, but to the individual. And so this is also the fulfillment that Jesus talks about of that after Jesus leaves that he said that the advocate would come soon after him. Now there is chaos and bewilderment as it says that ensues in this moment because these people are understanding the praises of the disciples in their own tongues. So they're confused that these men who are not trained in their language, do not grow up in their, their land, are all Galileans, can speak perfectly the dialects, the grammar, everything um, of their native tongue. And in hearing the gospel, this is the best way that they can ever experience that. And so they're actually becoming confused, and it's a little bit ironic, to the clarity that they're hearing this in. And this is the reversal of that curse of Babel. So if we think about it, we look back, Babel was the lack of God's presence and them doing everything away from God. And so their language was changed so they could not uh, complete the tower. While instead, when it comes to Pentecost, God's presence is physically there with them. And they all come together, all speaking different languages, but everybody understands what is happening and what they are saying. And also, God's not coming from far off into heaven to... Uh, to look and see what's going on. He is there in the midst with the people. And so the Spirit of the Lord is not scattering people, but it's actually drawing people near. To be able to hear what then comes next is Peter's proclamation of uh, the gospel. And so though there is, there is chaos for the moment, um, there's unifying within Jerusalem at this time. And Peter even dispels the mockery of them being, of saying that they're, they're drunk. And he goes full steam ahead into proclaiming why this first happened. So that's why he explains Joel, the, the, the prophecy from Joel. But then later on, uh, he does explain our need for salvation through Jesus. And the, like I said, the disciples are no longer in hiding anymore. So God has taken this moment and this miracle of unity of, of all these people coming together and also all of the fear that the disciples might have had, it's gone. God flips the fear and the chaos and the misunderstanding on its head, and he draws people from all over the Roman Empire to him. This is the same spirit that lives inside us today. And the Holy Spirit is the mighty power of our God's presence, and it is the power to change everything from our inside out. And it starts with the individual, and then it goes reaching to the nations. And the Holy Spirit is never a spirit of division or of chaos. And we are all called to be the body of Christ because we all have the same spirit of the Lord in us. So I go to this laundromat out on uh, Knoxon Road, and a few months back, it's winter time, and I'm not the most approachable person at the laundromat. I'm in my sweats, I sometimes have my hoodie up, and everyone kind of keeps to themselves for the most part. They're either watching Bonanza, reading a book, or uh, listening to music on their headphones. And I had been, uh, I was almost done. I was folding, uh, folding my clothes and I was getting ready to go. But like I said, I'm not the most approachable person in appearance when I'm there. And this woman walks in and she doesn't have any laundry. And she quickly just, uh, walks directly over to me. And I'm always a little bit wary about interactions when I'm not expecting it. And uh, she was, but the thing is, she was very kind and her presence was not unwelcoming or anything like that. But I was still surprised. And so she comes up to me 
And like I said, the most, I am the most unapproachable person here. There are many other people in this room that she could have gone to uh, that looked a lot more friendlier than I did. And she, she goes up and she introduces herself and then asks for my name and, and I give it to her. And like I said, I'm normally reluctant on these interactions. But I was not defensive and I didn't have that feeling that I needed to put my guard up or anything. But she did not stop there. She immediately proceeded into what she came to do and that was to ask me a question. And I'm sure some of you can probably guess where this is going. Um, but she asked me the question, do you know when you're where you're going when you die? Great, so this is the conversation I wanna have on a Saturday afternoon uh, about mortality. The, the one thing, the greatest fear of all humans, we're gonna talk about the laundromat. That, that is what I would have thought um, years ago. And strange enough, I did not feel uncomfortable in that conversation. What had, uh, I then couldn't help but smile at her and I had a, had a bit of joy, I was like, yeah, I do know where I'm going. I'm going to be with Jesus. And her, <laughs> her reaction was so wonderful. Um, she, you could immediately, immediately see the joy in her heart um, because she was excited to have this sort of conversation. And she had come to talk to people about Jesus. So we, we spoke for a moment longer. I, I, I got to know a little bit about her. She goes to a church of the charismatic tradition, and it had been placed on her heart to go and talk to people in our local laundromat every other week about Jesus. I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is great. So um, all I felt was just joy and encouragement for her. That is not my style of evangelism. There is no part of me that ever wants to have an interaction with someone where, <laughs> and it's not about my boldness. I have boldness in other ways, but I was amazed by hers in this. But I cannot stand confrontation in the sense of the possibility of rejection face to face. Even thinking about it, my ears get hot and I start to cringe. And I would rather just talk to people and get to know them first. But this, but this is how this woman wanted to introduce people to Jesus. And she did it with such just kindness and gentleness that, like I said, there was no, there was no guards up. There was nothing like that. And the spirit was so unbelievably present there. And so we finished our conversation. I prayed with her. And she did. She moved on and started talking with others. And I went back to um, folding my clothes. And I, and I finished up. But I did pay attention to her interaction and just seeing uh, how everything was going. And I, and I continued to pray for her as, um, as she was doing this. And here's, here's the thing. Though I'm not of the charismatic tradition, I am reformed. This is not my style of evangelism. It is hers. The spirit was clearly present between us. And... We all are part of the body of Christ. We all have different roles to play. And we live in this world that is so divisive. Everything in this world is trying to divide us as Christians, as family members, as friends. And that is not what God desires for us as believers and as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so all I could feel for this woman was encouragement. And like I said, she had this role to play. Her role was to be bold and it was placed on her heart to talk to people about Jesus in this way. Mine was to support her and to encourage her. Now, I, I'm speculating in this, but I, I do think that there's a, a reason why she approached me first. Maybe she was a little bit afraid of having this conversation. Maybe the Spirit moved her to want to talk to me first because she needed a slight bit of encouragement before she actually went on and did this. And I hope I gave her that. But it was an amazing experience to have because we knew that the Spirit was uniting us and that she was there to just talk to people. And she truly, like, the concern she had, not just for me and asking that question, she clearly showed that with the other people. 
and she seemed to have great conversations. No one pushed her away. They all engaged with her, and, and I, I really do pray that it went well and she was able to talk to these people about Jesus. And so this is my prayer for us and our encouragement for our church, but also our, the greater body of Christ in our area of, uh, of the Hudson Valley, is that we're able to come together as a body of Christ, as a family within, <laughs> within believers, that it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are, it doesn't matter how our theology might differ slightly, but that the, but that the Lord is present in us. And that we are the ones to stand up to the world and be the light and talk to people and proclaim the gospel in the ways that we know and, that, and how God wants us to. And Pastor Doug has said this, I think it was a few months ago, that he even pointed out that our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Sudan are probably more likely closer to us in friendship and in understanding than, say, our neighbors or the people we grew up with that are unbelievers. I truly believe that because we have this amazing connection through the Holy Spirit. And we see this in, in Pentecost as well. Although they're all speaking these different languages, God is drawing people near to hear the message of the one person, Peter, who stands up to be bold and to speak to the greater group of Jerusalem. And it didn't, start, it didn't stop there. It started with, with that group of, of 120 and Peter talking and then all of a sudden, it went out to Jerusalem, and then we get to encounter the experiences of Paul and Paul's ministry, and it goes throughout the entire Mediterranean. Then from the Mediterranean, an entire empire changed because of Jesus. That is the unifying aspects of the Holy Spirit. And so this is my prayer for us this week, that it starts at home, and that we can together just reach everyone in the Hudson Valley. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just I thank you that you've given us your spirit. And that it's it's your spirit that unifies us no matter where we've come from, no matter what we know or don't know, Lord, but it's that you are with us and that we are able to come together as as a family, as brothers and sisters. And I pray that we can continue to just proclaim your gospel and reach more people. Uh, and show them the love that we have for you and the love we have for each other, God. So let us have a great rest of this weekend and this beautiful sunshine that we have, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through, through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.